Hi, I'm Steve Barish, uh, founder and president of Barish Architects and Associates, Inc., a 33-year-old architecture planning and engineering firm. We have offices in uh, San Luis Obispo and Pasadena, California. Uh, I hold a, a Bachelor of Architecture degree from the University of Arizona and a Master's of Architecture and Urban Design from Rice University in Houston, Texas. Spent three years in London as the first PhD student at the Architectural Association, studying in conjunction with the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations. Uh, I founded my firm in 1977 in Pasadena, California, uh, on the premise that uh, innovative architecture creates lasting value for our clients and the general public. Our firm has worked on over 500 office facilities of all types, from low-rise to mid-rise to high-rise. Um, we've uh, probably designed in the area of 250 to 300 ground-up facilities um, throughout California and the western United States. Uh, a number of these buildings exceed 50 feet in height, which are considered high-rises in uh, certain municipalities. Some of them exceed 75 feet in height, and some of them have exceeded 110 feet in height. Our firm was one of the first to employ the use of post-tension concrete, concrete in multi-story buildings. Our firm also pioneered the use of site cast concrete, and our firm designed the first three-story tilt-up or site cast building in Southern California. So you can see we have uh, had experience in both concrete and steel uh, structures, multi-story structures of all types and sizes. Uh, approximately three and a half years ago, I read some articles, um, I think it was the uh, LA Times uh, and some other periodicals about some inconsistencies in the uh, government analysis and summary of the Twin Tower collapse. And about four to six months later, I attended a lecture here in the city of San Luis Obispo, uh, I think presented by Richard Gage and some associates that uh, went into more detail about uh, some of the in those inconsistencies and uh, how the third tower, which was not hit by a jet aircraft, also collapsed almost at the same time. So it uh, certainly raised some curiosity in me about these uh, circumstances. Some of the inconsistencies that I found rather curious was the fact that the buildings um, came down rather fast. Uh, they came down in a rather symmetrical pattern. Um, they came down uh, from the top down without uh, a uh, asymmetrical form at all. Buildings tend to de be delayed as they collapse. Uh, they don't just pancake down like this uh, in a very short period of time. Um, and it became obvious to me that with all the modern fireproofing techniques and life safety systems which are checked constantly, um, the temperature, uh, even with jet fuel, w could not, in my mind, bring a building down this fast in this pattern. Um, there would have to be some delays where some of the lower floors, which may have not been impacted by the crash, uh, would support the collapsing upper floors for a period of time. And clearly a more asymmetrical pattern uh, should have been present. Regarding the third tower, which was not hit by a jet, I, I just don't understand this one at all because the temperatures that it would take to cause the third tower to collapse would have to be a lot higher than the yield strength uh, of the steel and the fireproofing materials around the steel that encapsulate the steel. Uh, I'm sure that steel, uh, both the beams and the columns, had at least a two to three hour uh, fire encapsulation that would prevent um, the steel from being exposed uh, to this kind of heat for a much longer time than it actually happened. It also came down probably as fast as the Twin Towers, if not faster, in a much more symmetrical pattern. Um, 
I don't understand it. Modern steel buildings do not behave in that manner. And um, clearly there's a two to three hour uh, insulation around the structural frame that would preclude it from collapsing that quickly. Uh, there might have been smaller pockets of fire throughout the, uh, the building, but there was no major uh, uh, reason why that building would come down in the way it did uh, and as quickly as it did. Um, so uh, one of the things that, that really interested me is how quickly the Tower 7 fell. I'm told it fell within seven seconds approximately from top to bottom. Um, this building was built in the mid-80s apparently and uh, met all the known codes at the time. Uh, buildings just don't behave like that. If floors fall, they tend to fall and are braced by the floor directly beneath it. And there's some delay there. Uh, and then the next floor falls with two floors and there's some more delay. Uh, apparently there must have been some reason why the acceleration of the floors above uh, fell in such a brief time. Um, it, it was built apparently to uh, a fairly modern code uh, which required uh, stiff columns, stiff beams, and um, a great amount of fireproofing throughout the beams and the columns. So this is a mystery to me. There must be some other factors that may not have been considered. There is a lot of conspiracy potential here and a lot of alternative theories that I don't know much about. Uh, I'm speaking more as a practicing architect with uh, a firm that's been in business 33 years that has never seen anything like this. There needs to be a lot of further investigation into other possible theories of why this building collapsed due to fire um, and any fire related occurrences that might have been present at that building. I mean. Clearly, uh, if buildings don't behave like this, there needs to be a more thorough investigation of what might, may have caused this building to collapse in the manner that it did. I really believe that a much more thorough investigation of Tower 7 in conjunction with the Twin Towers needs to be undertaken and probably undertaken by uh, non-government agencies that have no vested interest in the uh, results of those investigations. Clearly, um, private testing laboratories and uh, uh, engineers familiar with the behavior of uh, multi-story steel buildings need to be consulted in an empirical manner. According to the records, the uh, building was 110 floors, approximately 43,000 square foot per floor. Um, and um, with the, the immense size of this building, even if uh, an aircraft hit it from one side, the back side should have come down in a way that you could see larger portions of the floor and the structural components of the building in place on the ground. After all, there was 110 floors in each building, and each floor plate was over an acre in size, which exceeded 43,000 square feet. There are uh, planned demolitions of, uh, you know, Pruitt-Igor, you know, is a classic case of a building that fell, and it fell in a certain way because it was demolished in a certain way with time charges and trigger charges. Uh, this, this, this project may have been the largest collapse of its kind, but other buildings have collapsed before in symmetrical manners, but they're planned to collapse that way. This building, if it did collapse, was an unplanned collapse, and yet it behaved in the same way that uh, man-induced demolitions uh, tend to behave which is why I'm so concerned the way it collapsed does not uh, compute for an unplanned demolition. There was not an independent outside empirical investigation completed here and perhaps it's time for before too many years pass and people pass on 
uh, that that kind of empirical, thorough investigation from people who do not have any biases or political leanings occurs.